last hand. So in this last session, I just want to uh, reflect a few more thoughts more broadly on uh, the prophetic. Firstly, Walter Brueggemann has written about a phrase that he uses called the prophetic imagination. And so he would see that a prophet, to use a metaphor um, such as a tree or a storm, they're using their imagination. And so he says that imagination is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. C.S. Lewis would say the same. And it's not making untrue stuff up when we use an image of a storm or a tree or fruitfulness. On the contrary, it may give us a deeper insight to truth and what we're what truth is about so prophetic imagination is the term that he uses the imagination is an ability yep hey oh just a little something on your on the forums on the right hand side yeah is that what you mean yeah yeah okay yeah no that's all good yep thank you so I've just been raptured there. <laughs> so the imagination is an ability to see hidden sides of things. The imagination is an ability to see aspects of God's holiness, judgment, um, and also difficulty and hurt. So imagination can be very, very useful in literature and in the prophetic, both in the author and the writer and also in the reader. And good writing encourages the imagination of the reader. Imagination is frequently used through the use of metaphors, images, and pictures. And also, it means being open. And so uh, I think in a sermon or in a church, being open, to, uh, the preacher being open to the imagination and the one who communicates uh, being open to the imagination is uh, very important. Um, the prophets also can touch on tragedy and uh, they can touch on irony and other literatures that we have uh, considered in past times. And so uh, we could explore um, these aspects of the uh, prophetic and uh, good and evil can be explored as well. Um, Prophecy also can lead to a sense of discernment and uh, in looking at aspects of the prophetic. I, I thought it was interesting uh, to think of the ways in which you discern that which is uh, truth and uh, true and working in your life. And so um, the Apostle Paul, he gained an understanding of the prophetic and he touches on the prophetic in 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14 in the New Testament. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about the prophetic being part of spiritual gifts. Um, that is the Holy Spirit like wind and water come into our lives and that can bring a sense of the discernment and whether it be a song or a prophecy or a teaching or miracles. Uh, Paul talks about this in Corinth. There's much debate about what's going on there in Corinth. And you can go visit ancient Corinth in, um, it's about an hour and a, to an hour and a half away from um, Athens. And so there's ancient Corinth with its temple. Um, and in Paul's time, uh, he stayed there for quite a time. And there's uh, remains of old shops there from 2,000 years ago where the uh, shops were, where Paul would have done tent making with uh, leather. But certainly um, they believed in uh, spirit powers. And Paul said that, that in the church, you can have those same spirit powers. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, he talks about the um, body being the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians um, 14, he also talks about the gifts of the Spirit, but he says in 1 Corinthians 13, more important than these gifts is the... Um, 
uh, love, the capacity to love one another and care for one another um, is uh, supreme. So that's 1 Corinthians um, 12 and 14. So I'll go to 1 Corinthians 14. Any questions about prophecy and tongues and all of those things that Paul mentions there? So they're more prevalent in more charismatic Pentecostal churches and Pentecostal Baptist, charismatic Baptist, and all of those other ways. So follow the way of love, desire, gifts of the spirit, especially the prophecy. So Paul says prophecy is a good thing that we should have more of. And one who prophesies builds up the church. Um, that raises the thought, of course, of um, uh, what a prophecy is when you have a prophecy building up the church. Is it like a uh, preaching? So if we go, any thoughts? What, what do you think? Is prophecy in a church more like preaching or is it more like I sense God is saying to us? Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, so we've got the preacher who's sharing the message, the correct message, and that's one way of understanding. Because really prophecy is having a sense that God's wanting to speak to us and then having a sense that some people, could be young people or people with a sense of maturity, are able to communicate that and say, I sense God is saying to us. And so it's a responsible position. In some churches, they can spend two years or more waiting on God for a sense that he has called them to be the minister. And so there is that sense of with this huge responsibility. And yet in other youth groups and things, we can say, no, nah, next week you'll have an opportunity to share. So it can vary that level of responsibility. Thoughts on, yeah. Mm. 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 And you feel it when you hear it. And I, and I guess even when you hear a Martin Luther King say, I have a dream, you feel, wow, there is something powerful in that word. And then it raises the question, is that sort of a, a, a God-inspired, spirit-inspired, life-inspired, or, or is it coming from careful craftsmanship or thought, or is it a combination of both? And so, yeah, it raises those thoughts. Thoughts? Um, well, it's kind of obvious you have somebody kind of is able to kind of say be the side to time mm. in that way, um, from side by going, like just seeing what's happening, going, this is where things are heading. In that way, we look at it. Um, just from the whole agility or maybe that's the stuff. And then also, we can have, and so in that way, you do have a, um, a certain. Uh, be better in that way. Then yes, yes. More direct box from someone in that. And so you can mm. sometimes you can be with the both or even both ways. I think probably more common is is probably more somebody seeing how like time to time and things will happen now or there. Well, that's probably, but yeah. Now, now, of course, songs can be very prophetic, can't they? And, and uh, I guess. In church service today, a third or more or half of his service can be songs, and they can be prophetic about, um, you know, God has called us, God's working. Um, and so I think it would be interesting to reflect on prophecy in song. Um, prophecy can also be uh, connected with working for particular groups for particular needs. I found an interesting um, paper before, Discerning the Call to Prophetic Civil Leadership, within the Afro-American pastoral tradition. 
So this is in Texas, in the US of A. It's a Master of Arts thesis, 2009, Austin Graduate School of Theology. But um, what I, I thought was interesting here was that throughout history, many have answered the unique prophetic call to serve the Afro-American church and community in various ways. And one of these ways is through preaching, but another is through being an orator or a politician or an idealist, sharing a vision of God's purpose. Traditionally for Afro-American clergy, God's prophetic call extends beyond the responsibility of preaching and teaching and counseling and shepherding a local congregation and extends into the public domain of civic leadership and the challenge of confronting systemic and institutional racism and other injustices in the community. And I thought this re reflects really well another aspect of the prophetic is that the prophetic can be a um, time of um, hearing God and hearing God for the community and then hearing God in order to you know, bring better purposes to pass. So there are a few thoughts on uh, other ways in which we can understand um, prophecy. Uh, there's an article there on prophecy in Bethel Church, which is known more for the charismatic Pentecostal prophecy. Uh, Gordon Fee, he says that prophecy is spirit-inspired, spontaneous, understandable messages, orally delivered often, but they can be written to people gathered in an assembly. So it's not just for individual, but it's for the gathered people, for the encouragement of the people. So prophecy can have uh, various forms um, and there's a lot of great insights there. Graham Goldsworthy, he says the prophecy um, continues in the tradition from Moses all the way through. It's a sense in which a humanly mediated word from God um, can be communicated to people to encourage them. Can we take the um, last 10 to 15 minutes then just to uh, run through what can you do in the next um, uh, four to five days to be very effective in your assignments? Can I get everyone to think and write down what are some things that will make for a stronger assignment? So for a stronger assignment, so you've got an assignment coming up. If you have any more questions on prophecy, feel free to ask me, but can I get everyone to write down for a stronger assignment, we should. Now, one of the things that I think is the starting point for a stronger assignment is strong scholarly resources. Sometimes you can find them by going to um, Google Scholar and you can put in uh, your uh, topic, which could be Daniel um, and Revelation. And then today we've been uh, doing prophecy, but you go there and then you've got these resources here and then sometimes you'll find some of them are duds. They don't have much there, but sometimes you'll find some good resources. Sometimes you can put in um, the term abstract or thesis, and you may know other terms as well. And sometimes that'll bring up someone's scholarly thesis in the area that you're looking at. And I think that's quite a good model to follow. If someone's written some scholarly work, and done it as a thesis, then um, as a scholar, that can be uh, useful. So I think that's one of the secrets for a stronger assignment. We should have strong scholarly sources. You can go to the Heritage College Library website and put in there. Then the thoughts: what what would you do to make a good assignment? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you've got to balance. Uh, your time. Now, some people leave it till the day before it's due and they rely on coffee to give them good grades in their assignment, but I don't know that that's the best way. I think um, better the more you can space the time out a bit. And then if you've got an assignment coming up in two weeks or three weeks as well, when your brain's a bit dead in the afternoon, sometimes you can switch to that one, but at the same time, sometimes you want to keep one train of thought. So you've got to balance the ways you do it. Another secret people say is to balance editing with um, gathering. And so instead of spending 80 or 90% of your time getting the good resources, 10% of your time finishing it off, some have said that 50% of your time given to the 
going through it, editing, reworking it can lead to a good assignment. It, it makes to one well written. Thoughts? How do you produce a good assignment? Uh, okay. Making sure your uh, ideas match up, like your mm. ideas. Yeah. 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 And that's like building furniture or something. It's you can gather the bits, but you've got to put it together and rework it and rework it. And I know students, if they've got seven days, they'll sometimes spend three days gathering the material, but they'll spend three days editing and reworking and polishing it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so like that, and there can be times when you need to change from the plan, and so uh, that's worth looking at. Uh, Jay, do you have thoughts on how you produce strong assignments? Um, start writing it. <laughs> <laughs> so start writing it, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, look, for me, you know, and this is such a biblical-based one for me. I'm just going to be praying that the Lord reveals some wisdom that I can write down and sound really impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now you've mentioned praying for wisdom with a biblical-based one. I think one of the secrets is um, commentaries. So there are books that provide the wisdom. And so if you are doing whichever book of the Bible, go to a commentary. And one is Sonic Light. Um, but there are other commentaries as well that you can find online. So even if you Google commentary and the name of the book, that will be useful. Matthew, how do you feel about um, effect, uh, developing effective assignments? What are some of the steps? Uh, one step that I'm in at the moment is just categorising um, mm. the information. Um, mm. So I can begin to join those dots. Yep. Just grouping stuff together. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I like that categorizing, grouping, gathering the information. And so you often develop paragraphs where you've got all the same ideas together in one spot. And then sometimes it's worth leaving out a third or two thirds of your assignment for another day. So you gather all this information and then you think that doesn't really fit in with this assignment. That's somewhere else. Now, these days, you don't have to throw it out. You can cut and paste that into another page save that for another time. So sometimes your assignments are best with what you leave out. The difficulty is sometimes you leave out the very best bits that were, um, and so you've got to think through um, how you uh, cover uh, that. So let's draw a close then. Um, uh, let me pray as we um, uh, draw together today's session on prophecy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to be open to revelations that you may bring into our lives. Lord, we have a sense that you do speak into our lives at times as to uh, through other people, at times through just an openness to you, at times through your word. And then you do at times open up opportunity for us to share these insights with one another Lord, we do pray as we write these assignments that you might speak to us. And as we're open to you and the future that you have for us, we pray that you'd speak to us as well. Amen. Yeah. So any questions at all on your assignments? Or it's just a matter of, yeah. Got to go for it. Got to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think will be the hardest thing in the assignment? <laughs> and that just takes time, doesn't it? It's just, yeah, yeah. Working it, working it. Yeah. Can you overwork an assignment? Right? So it gets rid of that freshness and it becomes different, doesn't it? Because certainly you can do that with a song and a poem. And you, and you need to save the original because that's a different work 
of a later one. And same with painting, you can overwork that canvas. It's, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm sure you'll do well. I look forward to reading yours and that we've got those couple of extra days. That we yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, Jade, any thoughts? So which topic and um, how are you going with yours, Jade? Um, yeah, I've just been listening to a lot of um, podcasts and things related to the kind of subject. Uh, yeah, image bearing. Um, mm. I love the Bible Project, so I've been listening to what they've got to say. I feel like it's already swaying my yeah. what I'll probably talk about, but yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think the Bible Project are a pretty good um, resource because they've got reasonable qualifications and reasonably sound then uh, even though it's not necessarily PhD focused, it's um, uh, pretty solid material that you've got there. So I think Bible Project's very good. I, I would recommend um, Google Scholar uh, as a way of putting in image bearing. And, uh, and so you're going to look at a particular um, part of um, uh, the Bible. So which um, Bible story would you look at? Um. Yeah, look, I haven't entirely decided, which is not very good, I know. But um, I was considering simply just looking at um, just the creation story in Genesis. Mm. Um, yeah. But then at the same time, I'm... And, and uh, I'll just here as an example, you might be able to see up. I've put in uh, image bearing Genesis creation, and it's brought a lot of thought into it. Yeah, but um, that could be another one there, and um, mm. yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's some wonderful ideas to explore there in um, uh, creation and image and, and what it uh, means. Yeah, and I think as the other students said, it, it's really. Um, the quality of the good resources is partly what you need, good mat building materials to build with. And then uh, following on from that, um, uh, you then construct that into the particular assignment. And then you want something on um, literature in the Bible. So um, uh, uh, we'll look back over, say, um, uh, plot and narrative and uh, metaphor and other literary aspects that we've looked at as well can be useful yeah yeah matthew any thoughts questions on doing well in the assignment um yeah well like i have been i've stayed with the genesis 3 narratives yes uh, but i have not nailed it down for my joseph story mm. to genesis 37 to only yeah but well, it took me a while to really work out like just because it's such a big story it's like a little novel tacked on the end yeah, of yeah. genesis um but it has those connections with genesis 4 um with that just the human dynamics mm. um and so yeah there's some some, some stuff there and, I, and the good thing about genesis 4 for me is how it really is fraught with background mm. Um, there's so much that is not filled out. There's hardly any description there, and but there's a lot in the the literary features there that can be brought out. So, and then yeah, just Genesis three as well because that's always a fascinating story. I'm really keen to. There's some interesting things with the dialogue mm. that happens, um, especially with um, verbatim um, differences which brings out some interesting characterization. So I'm, my main interest is digging into the literary features for me. I'm wondering whether probably you might be better to choose either Genesis 37 or Genesis 3 and 4 um, in that they may be um, rather different places and times. Mm. Um, yeah, because um, that would patriarchal and yeah, yeah, that would actually get away from um, 
any difficulties that you would have, um, whether they match are. Um, certainly Genesis 3 and 4 is a wonderful combination of a couple of chapters close together. Um, they're, they're clearly connected, I would think. Um, mm. whereas yeah, they the, really uh, cling yeah. to one another. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the cool thing about the, the Genesis 37 thing, though, for me, is the type scene. It's a dream type yeah. scene. Yeah. And um, there's some obvious, well, there's, yeah, the, within the, um, the formulation, there's things missing. Mm. Um, and so, and that, again, stems into the characterization. So, Mm. Look, the overarching connecting thing there is just again man's will, God's providence. So I can, can I'm going to connect it probably that way. Yes. But I just want to yes. I just want to yes. focus in on these few different literary aspects, which I find really interesting because as in because I'm going to be an yes. English teacher, they're the things right. that I need to get my head around. I found the book really really good because it's given mm. me a lot more information. Mm. to identify these techniques yes yes and so that's where my interests lay yeah yeah and, th and that'll be really valuable to yeah, strengthen your english mm. um, teaching side and the english understanding of um, yeah what is the nature of uh, literature and language and uh, as as you say all, all three of these chapters cover it well with chapter 37 um really does uh, do a wonderful job. Yeah, no, I think that'll be very, very good. So thank you, each one. And uh, thank you for your pro prophetic word that you wrote down too, Matthew. I found that uh, very helpful and very positive. Uh, you're welcome. Well. It's, it's a good activity to do. I, yeah. I like those little forum things. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And thank you, Jade. Great to um, see what you're doing. Catch up uh, again through the class. So thank you, each one. See you next week. Thanks very much. Bye. Catch you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.